before we get going, just want to, uh, on behalf of the Blackhawks organization, offer our condolences to uh, Tab Bamford and the Bamford family on the loss of his father. Um, bit of a slower year uh, with the deadline this year, obviously traded Anthony to uh, the Predators for a fifth round pick. Um, other than that, we didn't uh, we make any other moves. Um, you know, some chatter, but not a, not a whole lot of substance there. So um, in other kind of news, transaction wise, we loaned uh, Louis Crevier, Isaac Phillips down to Rockford um, with the potential return of Nikki Zaitsev tomorrow. So we'll see how Z feels after morning skate, but it's looking promising that it'll return. And then uh, the only other transaction we made was to uh, paper transact um, Zach Sanford uh, down to Rockford and back up after the deadline and so he'll be eligible for loan post deadline uh, should we choose to do so so uh, but he will stay with the team uh, for the foreseeable future so with that any questions with the with Beauvillier how much of it was uh, you know him and Barry Trotz going back a couple of years and, and maybe a good fit for him there yeah I think that was a huge part of it uh, you know as you mentioned Barry had some previous uh, experience with with Anthony and um, and so that I think that familiarity was something that would definitely play, came into play uh, in him showing some interest and then eventually getting a deal done. And with uh, Boris uh, Kachuk, uh, what was the thinking with uh, putting him on waivers? Yeah, it would have been to uh, make him eligible to go down to Rockford, um, be eligible for not only to go down to Rockford but for their playoffs. Uh, so it, that was that was the, the thought process behind it was just to try and um, make him eligible for long less stressful uh, trade deadline for you this year? You know what, it's it did, yes and no. Uh, last few years were just, you know, stressful for different reasons. You know, m the activity, you know, gravity of some moves. Uh, this year was, you know, I think more stressful because, not, no, it wasn't more stressful, it was a different kind of stress because I, the last two deadlines I've worked have been so busy that this felt different it's just you know you're thinking like is there something else I should be doing or you know and so it was just it was just different it was it was um, you know to say it was much more quiet would be an understatement so uh, it was it was different you know it's I'm you know it, you, you still work the phones the same and you know just there's less substance in those phone calls which you know feels like you're spinning your wheels a bit but no uh, you know all good and and uh, it's just a different year for us. Were you hoping to get one or two more trades done, or? Uh, I didn't really have anything pegged. I, I just thought, you know, uh, heading into the, I thought maybe there would be a little more activity, whether we did something or not. I, it was a different story, but I just thought there would be a little more uh, action on our end. But it was it was quieter, which is fine, and we're happy to uh, have the group we have moving through the deadline. And so. Um, but uh, yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't like dead set on trying to make other moves or anything. If it happened, it happened, and it didn't. So. Did it seem like compensation was reeled in a bit this year? It seemed like there weren't as many ones and twos and threes being offered. It was. Yeah, it, it felt more unpre unpredictable this year. I thought, even just seeing what some of the different deals were around the league. Obviously, some of the players that got um, you know first round pick packages were very good players and. Uh, and that made sense, but I, I, yeah, it seemed like there were fewer in that mid-range, that two, three, four round range. Just didn't seem as many of those picks, uh, seem as many of, of, of those picks moved this year, which, you know, either that's, you know, I don't know if that's supply or demand or what have you, but it just, yeah, it did, it did seem like there was a bigger spread of like those later round picks that were moving uh, as opposed to recent years. Well, when you re-signed Felino Mrazic and Dickinson, did you sort of, I guess, understand that maybe leveraging that uh, there was going to be a different deadline or that those are the guys that made the move would have been drawn some assets? For sure. Yeah, no, I, that was a decision we had made and, and understood that that would, uh, you know, those signings would likely uh, limit our, our, you know, the, the interest or, or, you know, volume of calls we were going to field um, at the deadline, which that all went into the mix and, and in the end, you know, we came out strongly in favor of keeping them around than, you know, uh, any potential activity around the deadline. There was a fair amount of salary retention in trades around the league. Was that something you talked with teams about? Yeah, you, you get, 
uh, you get feelers on that. I just, uh, the ones that, that came to us just didn't, uh, I don't think it made sense given we only have two uh, retained salary spots left. Um, you know, for a late round pick is just something I, I didn't want to potentially limit ourselves, whether it be today or down the road or whatever. I just wanted to keep those spots open. With, with this over with, and, and I mean, it looks like you guys can finish maybe we're first and fourth in the draft lottery. How much of your focus goes into, into that for the last few months of the season or the grand period of the lottery and then the draft? Yeah, definitely. You definitely, uh, you know, that's going to take up a lot of uh, the focus now that along with kind of tracking some of the prospects down down the stretch and see how they're doing uh, where we might want to have them play whether it's to end this year or to uh, you know play next year you know those kind of uh, conversations are going to really heat up and, and start start to be had so um, yeah between obviously draft prep uh, and then those those prospect conversations that's definitely going to be a shift in focus you've got some collegiate guys you can look at now mm -hmm. um you might be going to i don't know if you're going to ann arbor or to uh i'm going to go with the team all right uh, the, the plane will probably be late but, but, yeah. <laughs> or i'll be late to the plane but um you you've got one guy who's a senior uh, mm -hmm. so he's he'll be done with that whenever they're done yeah. and you've got maybe another guy who's a sophomore who's uh, at michigan who may or may not then i think from another year collegiate hockey or those are the kind of things that you're playing. those are gonna be the conversations yes yes as as players finish up uh with um you know when the time comes to have those conversations both internally and externally we'll, we will have those um but you know it's an important time of the year for them and so that's a conversation for another day when there are no more games for them but until there are no more games then we'll just kind of let them let them focus on their team. I don't think we've talked to you since Ryko went to Rockford. What went into that decision and how has he received that that you've seen from the last few weeks? Yeah, I think, well, it, just another uh, way of trying to kickstart, uh, you know, whether it be uh, confidence, whether it be this, the play, you know, getting more puck touches, more play, um, you know, just try and get some positive momentum going. You know, it's been a tough year for him, but he responded really well. He's, he's I, I've, I've watched one live game and then a bunch of them on on uh, on video, and um, you know I think it's it's trending the right way, and so I, I think there's there's some positive momentum there, uh, so we'll look to carry that on a bit longer, but um, you know we'll kind of just keep an eye on him, and when the time's right, we'll uh, we'll make a decision on on where he needs to be. I know you've seen Landis Slater a lot of the last years, but I'm just seeing him this year. Any any anything that benefited him from returning our game for his senior season? Um, you know I, I think. He, well, he had a great year offensively, especially goal scoring. Uh, kind of found a little bit of uh, a little extra goal scoring punch, which I think is good for his confidence. But um, again, being a leader there and, and getting a lot of time and, and you know playing against some pretty good teams in the Big Ten, it's great experience. But um, you know he just continued that style of play, the relentless, high compete style that he's always had, and then add a little bit of offense this year, which which was good to see and. Um, good for you know his confidence when uh, you know his season's done and hopefully we can turn him pro. What do you think of Nazar after you know coming back to Michigan from the Olympics and the way he played? Olympics or uh, World Juniors? I mean, so sorry. <laughs> sorry. I know. I'm I getting got, ahead of myself. I got you. World Juniors. Yeah. yeah sorry. Hopefully Thank Olympics. You. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, um, you know where my head is at. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No. He he. Again, he went to that tournament a lot like the other players too. They and they came back with. A ton of confidence. Maybe it was the win. Maybe it was the role. Whatever changing little different teammates and, and different scenery. But um, came back with a ton of confidence and, and yeah, just seemed to take his game to another level. And so um, you know, just confidence with the puck. You know, carrying it, making plays. I think it all really you know stepped up a level once he got back from uh, back from Sweden overseas. So it was it was good to see. And, and he's been playing really well. He played well in the first half, but took it to another level in the second half. They're only freshmen, but more in Renzel too, but Minnesota seemed to have the same path as he did. Mm -hmm. um, they're obviously only freshmen. Yeah. So, um, yeah, um, you know, I think with any with any player, you just, you kind of reevaluate once the, uh, once the season's done, uh, you try and um, do a little bit of a, a recap on, on where they're at, you know, it's the best development option for them. and. You know, uh, Oliver's going in there, you know, as a true freshman. Sam took one more year in, in the USHL to to uh, 
before he went into school, so he's a little bit older than, than Oliver, but um, no great seasons from them. You know, again, went to World Juniors, came back and seemed to really step it up uh, after, after the, the new year there. So um, things are trending the right way and, you know, how we handle them or, you know, uh, where they go from uh, after their season, I think is a conversation for another day. You know, again, like you said, they're freshmen, they're, they're early on in their college career. So it's, uh, it's something we'll chat about when, when they're done. One of their teammates is uh, Gavin Hayes, and when he was traded from Flint, uh, he's just kept that uh, progression going on with Sue. Better thing too is their position better, obviously, in the O. Mm -hmm. Are you looking to see with him not only that continued development, but also how he responds when they have a really good chance of him in the uh, OHL playoffs? Yeah, for sure. It, it's it's great seeing any of your prospects, or you know whether you're scouting for the draft or you're. you're Looking at your own players, it's it's great to see them in those pressure situations, those higher leverage situations, and you know certainly playoffs and and uh, you know whether it's World Juniors or playoffs, but in this case, this question playoffs is is you know that's great to see those players in those environments and and you know you hope that they rise to the occasion and but it, it, even going through it is is valuable too, right? It's uh, so it, it'll be you know interesting to see his. His and their progress through the the postseason. They they do have a good team, and and hopefully they can have a you know have a good run. It'll be good for uh, good for Gavin to go through that after going through a nice situation with Team USA World Juniors. And then Rockford, uh, he's been Del Mastro with Drew Cabeso. What have you liked? You talked a little bit about Del Mastro back in January. He had a game winner the other night. Mm -hmm. You've had to have really liked to see the progression he's had to, especially playing big minutes. Yeah, definitely. And you know it's it's always nice when you can see your players, you know, one, take a step up to another level as Ethan did this year uh, in the AHL and then play big minutes and carry that through. And, and you know, he's obviously AHL all-star, um, playing a bunch of different situations, which is really key for the development down there and something we are able to provide in Rockford and something that he's grabbed hold of and, and ran with. And so really happy with, with how his year has gone. And then, with Drew, you know, first year pro as a goalie, playing about 50-50, and you know that's that's also not the easiest spot to step into. But he's been he's been really solid, and the team's been playing uh, playing well. And and you know, for young goalies, it's all about experience, just getting those reps, and you certainly get getting that. And again, you mentioned uh, with your previous question about uh, playoffs. Hopefully, we can get to a point with Rockford where they're in the playoffs, and those guys can can experience some uh, postseason hockey. Uh, at the pro ranks. How do you evaluate some of the younger players that may have been up here um, a little bit longer and more consistently than you would expect it because of all the injuries that have happened? Um, yeah, I think it's, it's case by case and, and you, you sort of just, uh, you know, monitor, you know, how they're going with, you know, confidence and, and you know, things that maybe they weren't executing at the start of the year that maybe they are later on or things they're still struggling with. You know, it's, it, it's, it's, um, you know, it's not necessarily about them being up or at a level longer than, than you want them to be. It's just about, you know, if they're in a situation, how are they handling it? And in some cases, you know, we felt it was important for players to take a step back and perhaps go to Rockford. And then in other cases, um, you know, they've, they've held on and held their own uh, to the point where they deserve to stay here. And so it just case by case and making sure that, um, you know, they're they're moving in the right direction, whether it be, you know, even if it is incrementally and slowly, that's that's fine too, but just making sure there's no step back. I mean, how do you look at this season, you know, from a performance standpoint with these kind of rough stretches? I mean, do you look at it as a development year? Uh, yeah, well, I think with where we're at uh, in our trajectory, I think we are in that development stage, right? Where we're looking for growth and, giving experience to players and, and yeah, there, there have been some rough stretches and no one ever wants and you don't use uh, injuries as, as an excuse. Having said that, this has been a pretty unprecedented run that we've experienced in the middle of the season with injuries where we're not the deepest team given where we're at in, in the uh, rebuild and kind of building things back up where we lose as many players as we did. It's really hard to overcome that. And so, um, you know, but through those stretches, even though maybe the wins weren't there, a lot of nights we played really close games with some really good teams. And again, that's not a win, 
on the board and we want to get to where those are wins on the board but um, in looking at the process of things you're seeing that a team that competes that that can you know hold their own despite being shorthanded with with injuries and so that's pot that's a positive from my my perspective um, and then with some of the young players they're getting you know great experience you know they're, they're getting used to the level whether it be Connor or Kevin or Vlasic right um, you know first full year Alex, Alex you know had a little bit of a taste last year but um, first full year in the NHL and you're seeing positive progression in those young players and so that's what it's about and uh, and so you know I, I've been I've been really happy with uh, how the team has responded to some really tough circumstances this year. When you look at free agency this summer, um, probably at some point you have to take your approach of like adding guys that are mm-hmm. going to be long term. Uh, is this that summer, or could that be a summer away where you're not just looking for like minor placeholders, but mm-hmm. long term team building pieces? Um, yeah, I think you know you have to get to that point to see who's available. First of all, um, you know the, the thing about a lot of these. You know, whether it's free agency or what have you, if you're looking long term, like some pretty good players, normally their teams do everything they can to lock them up, and there's still a considerable amount of time to do that. Um, you know, I, I I don't know if we'll be in the long term game. We'll kind of evaluate that when we get there and, and see where we're at in a couple months. But um, you know, we'll again as we did last year and maybe more so this year, we'll look to probably uh, explore free agency and see again. It's all about what's there too, right? Like we can sit here today and the free agent list looks like this and you get there and it's, it's, it's you know, much more minimal. So it, it's kind of a, an, uh, a situation that's lacking some information right now. So we'll kind of see who's, who's available in free agency and go from there. But it's something we're willing to explore and, and kind of, you know, dip into if, if, it, if it's advantageous to us. But, um, you know, we also have to be mindful of where we are in this process as well and not um, do anything to harm the long-term uh, viability of what we're building. Is that a tough balance to strike where you want to surround the young players with a supporting cast in the short term without affecting the long-term picture financially? Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's definitely a balance you have to strike, right? And, and you're always weighing that with everything you do. Um, you know, we we I'm really happy with what we've been able to do to uh, give ourselves the freedom financially to have that be an option to us, uh, where we can either go out, whether it be trade or signing, whatever whatever situation you may uh, you know look at, where we have the cap room and cap flexibility to do that. It's just, but with the understanding that that flexibility goes away quickly. Um, and making sure when we do jump into something uh, or, or commit to something long term that this this does make sense, you know, all the way through, especially with where we're at, you know, I, I uh, you don't want to you don't want to make uh, you know a jump too soon and 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 then you know like I mentioned before, limit your ceiling of what you can be or you know sign something too early and then want to try and move it later on like that. You know, we just want to be careful of how we spend our money. It was, you know, it, it it's a really hard thing to get that flexibility in this league once you don't have it anymore. And so we will be reluctant to give that up until it, uh, it really makes sense. Have, have you been happy with the way that you used the flexibility the last few years? Are you guys, have you been, what you wanted to get done with it? Yeah, I, you know, I, I think it's, I, it's a very easy thing to say, like, go weaponize your cap space, go do that. But you have to have someone that's, you know, another party to that, right? And someone else, uh, and, and get fair value for that, and, and you know, so. But you know, I think we've we've done it fairly uh, fairly well, and, and in some cases where, you know, we've brought some of those players back who we used it with, right? We've moved up in the draft, um, not a, a huge distance, but we moved up in the draft and and got Peter, uh, resigned him, and we got a second round pick to take on. Jason Dickinson and re-signed him. Um, so I, I think those are those are positives for the organization and, and came through the usage of our cap space and, and the freedom in our budget to take those players on. 
um, you know, and there's other examples of that as well that we've we've done. But um, no, I, I I think we've probably done it four or five times, you know, that I can just think of off the snap of my fingers. But um, you know, I think in a year and a half, two years, that's that's quite a bit. Um, you know, you're always looking for more. You're always looking at different options, trying to better your situation. Uh, uh, and if there was something there, then there's no hesitancy to to jump on that. And, but just nothing uh, nothing new on on that front to, to jump at right now. So. What's your latest take on the leadership group of this club? Are you thinking of the next captain of the Blackhawks? Uh, not right now. No, I haven't given that much much thought. I think we'll just get through this year and see where we're at. But as far as the leadership in the locker room, I, I'm extremely happy with how how things are going, how the team uh, you know, has come together and they're a tight group and they have fun together. And, and so I think that's, that's due in large part to the leadership group that's bringing everyone together and, and you know, building that camaraderie and, and that team feel. So I'm um, really happy how that's all gone. Given the circumstances of the team right now, uh, what are your criteria, your, your tools for evaluating uh, the job that Luke Richardson is doing? Yeah, it's it's it, you know it's a bit of a tough one just given the you know the the losses and the injuries and you know but a lot of what you're you're looking at as well is is you know, is that team showing up and and uh, competing every night and I think we can see that they are you know there's you know it's also tough too to to measure you know those some of the mistakes that that we make are, are you know why are those and you know those are you know, there's probably multiple reasons for some mistakes that happen on the ice that to us versus other teams. And so, you know, that's taken into account as well. But, um, you know, overall, I think th the coaches have done a, a really good job. It, it's not easy, um, you know, being where we are in the standings and having that team continually show up and compete and have fun and, and want to want to play hard, uh, you know, for, for you know, in, where we are in this like last 40 days, right? It's not, it's not, it's not as easy as you think. And so, you know, I think we see that this team does show up and compete every single night, and they want to play for, uh, play for Luke and the staff. And so, um, you know, that's that's definitely a positive that uh, you know the coaching staff has brought. And um, you know, we saw it last year right to the end. You know, we were in games that people didn't think we should be in, and it's my hope that that continues this year too, that we're, you know, these games towards the end of the season that are really important to other teams uh, and, and may seem less important in the grand scheme of things for the Blackhawks, that we're going to go out and win those games and, and or put a scare in them or, you know, it's not going to be an easy game. And so I, I hope we continue that uh, like we did to the end of last year and, and you know, uh, if we're able to do that, that's, that's a testament to the coaching staff. With Alex Vlasic, he's on uh, or due for a second contract this summer. We've seen other teams with similar young defensemen go for longer-term deals and talk about cap flexibility. What's the the thought process with with him and, and his next deal? Yeah, yeah. I think you're always uh, you know sort of evaluating what the most advantageous thing is uh, you know in the short and long term. Uh, so you know you weigh you know is a short-term deal makes sense? Does a longer-term deal right away make sense? And so those are things we're kind of working through. I think it's it's something that there's not a, a huge rush to to get to. Um, I think the, the main thing is for Alex to keep playing well and keep developing and keep getting those reps at the NHL level and and uh, continue his growth. And then, you know, that contract will take care of itself. You have a lot of guys that are coming up for contracts. A lot of them that are like middle or bottom uh, six uh, I mean, if you want to, this could be a chance to bring a, a whole influx from, um, you know, the prospect pipeline. I just want to know what your thought process is. Like, if you're going to take this opportunity to kind of totally reshape the roster, or is it just going to be a gradual thing? Uh, it's probably more of an off-season, you know, question, and you know, you know, early summer, you know, sort of, sort of thing. We get through the rest of this year, see how everyone does. And from a you know prospect standpoint, see where they're at. You know what does the trade market look like? What does the free agent market look like? And then figure out how, where we want to go with the team based on the options and, and where everyone's at. But um, 
yeah, I think it's as as we're building, it's you know you're always evaluating and and weighing the different looks that you could you could bring to your roster at the NHL level. <laughs> Like the mayor.